Hi, this is Jill from Boomer Tech Adventures. I am a member of the Mid Coast Retired Educators Association here in Maine. And a couple of days ago, uh, we were on our February Zoom meeting, and I talked with them a little bit about Zoom. I shared some things I knew that I thought maybe they might be interested in. And we really had a good time. We had some giggles. Uh, I certainly learned some uh, new information and um, did a little problem solving along the way. So I thought I'd just share with you some of the highlights. So I need to share my screen. Go. So this is uh, the slideshow that I used with them as kind of guide or talking points. Of course, I'm not going to go through all of it with you. Uh, however, one of the things we talked about was the view, how you get to see people you're on Zoom with. And a lot of folks didn't know that you could change the view. For example, you can have gallery, which in the image uh, on the screen, you see that presenter has just the people who are there. Or you can use the speaker view, which allows uh, the person who's speaking to be big, a bigger square. And so we talked about where you find the word view. And of course, because these were uh, retired educators, they had a variety of different devices. We had PCs, we had apples, we had iPads, we had other tablets. So we went over that, for example, in the iPad, you have to look up in the upper left-hand corner after you tap the screen and you'll find the word view and you can change between gallery and speaker. On most computers, whether it be an Apple or a PC, it was in the upper right-hand corner. And I suggested uh, if you can't find it, keep looking. And by the end, everybody had found their choices and were really delighted because now they could scroll through and see everybody was there. And of course, of course, in COVID times, we haven't been seeing people in person, so that was really very cool. Uh, and of course, they could also choose to have the speaker. Now, another thing we did that people really enjoyed was they didn't know you could find a whole list of participants in the meeting. Now, this is especially neat when uh, you're in a large group, like we had, I don't know, 24 or 25. And so I explained that you have to find that participant icon, the two little people. And uh, people went looking, again, depending on what device. So we went slowly, so everybody found it. And when they clicked on it and saw on the right-hand side a whole list of participants, I mean, there were lots of, wow, that's really cool. So from participants, we went to chat. Well, let me just get there. All right, so most of them did not know that you could carry on a chat or ask questions. So of course, I showed them that you can chat with everyone, or you could just do it individually. And, uh, of course, I made them practice because we're all educators and you know that showing is not enough. You've got to do it. So we must have spent five or ten minutes with chatting and that's where the giggle started. Uh, because people were sending private notes and they were sending notes to everyone or people would write humorous notes to everyone. And it was a good time. And I kept saying, you know, it's just like in class we had. It's like passing notes. But that, then we got serious and said, okay, how might you use this in a meeting? And people, of course, came up with good solutions or good ideas immediately. Things like, well, we could do a poll, or uh, people could ask a question without interrupting, or they could share um, a file or a website that was connected. And so, once again, simply having the ability to practice chat and participants, folks learned something new and they were able to use it on their own device, which is really pretty important. So again, we talked about uh, how on a tablet or phone, 
you won't have that toolbar, but you've got the three dots. And the three dots always means you have more options. And like I said, we did practice. Now, after we got through giggling through chat and talking about how we might really use it to help the meetings go better, we moved on to reactions. And again, lots of people didn't know that they could do a thumbs up or a thumbs down or that they needed a coffee break and uh, were happy to learn again that they could show agreement without having to interrupt the speaker. And that was important to them. So we looked at the different options. For example, when you use the icon on the toolbar on a computer, you see you have a variety of options, including, you know, can you slow down? Or can you speed up? This is going on forever. Uh, laughter, applause, thumbs up, etc. And once again, we talked about the three dots and how important they are on tablets and phones because they always give you more options. And we talked about the uh, different reactions uh, on tablets and on phones. After that, I said, okay, we got to have some fun. Now again, you know, retired educators. So most of us, 60s, 70s, we even have people in their 80s. And they are Zooming with grandchildren. I said, now look, I'm going to show you how to impress your grandchildren or your children. So we went to first with tablets and phones and talked about that you have a two camera option with a, a tablet or a phone because you've got the, both the front and the back so you can use those, but that you can add virtual backgrounds. And I gave them the example of me uh, using one of Zoom's virtual backgrounds and then how you can use uh, images from your own Photos app. And that's me with the pumpkins. But I said, those of you using computers, you really can have fun because not only do we have virtual backgrounds, we have virtual filters. And you can add these different features to yourself. So you see I've got a, a nice red and white polka dot bandana on my head, which perks me up terrifically in the, here in the middle of the winter. Uh, but I could have gone as a pirate or, um, oh, it looks like a duck or a bunny rabbit, all sorts. Well, we had to play with that. And again, people giggled, had a good time, but we're learning all the same. And of course, being a retired educators, we know that there's nothing wrong with connecting fun and new learning. And then the last thing I shared with them was the virtual background on a computer. Now, I mentioned that I learned some things. Well, one of the things I learned, it really depends on what device you have, what computer, how old it is, and what version of Zoom you are using. Because not everybody, first of all, could do virtual backgrounds. Not everybody had the same virtual backgrounds that I did. And some people didn't have the video filters at all. So that was a good learning to know that you need to make sure that your Zoom app is up to date, that you've got uh, all the updates so that you have all the options and also know that you have, if you have an older device, you may have issues. The other thing I learned before I end was that sometimes weird things happen. We had one person who somehow ended up on Zoom's website. Don't know how that happened. And she kept getting messages. You're no longer in the Zoom meeting. However, she was right there on the screen we could see her, we could talk to her, don't have any idea what happened, but what we learned is the solution is she left the meeting, went back to her email, and came back in. So that was a huge learning for everyone, that sometimes things go wrong, so what you do is you exit if you're not the host. If you're the host, you don't want to exit because you send everybody away, but if you're just a participant, you can exit, leave the Zoom, 
and uh, come back in again through the link. So that was the uh, Midcoast Retired Educators learning more about Zoom, having a good time, and also proving what was in every single professional development meeting we ever had in our 30 plus years of teaching and administrating is we are all lifelong learners and we will continue to learn as long as we can. So that's it from me. Uh, if you haven't played with some of these things on your Zoom, you ought to try them out. See you next time.